With great power comes great responsibility. These are the words of Stan Lee, author of the Spider-Man comic book series. But where does data power come from, and what are the responsibilities for us as data scientists? First, let's talk about power. In May 2017, The Economist ran the following headline, the world's most valuable resource is no longer oil, but data. In fact, the data as the new oil analogy originates from as early as 2006, when Clive Humby from Tesco in the UK said that data is the new oil, it's valuable, but if unrefined, it cannot really be used. And that's where you come in. Data is an extremely valuable resource, but it's up to you to extract the value. Data is potential, and it's up to you to realize its full potential. Being a data scientist is a powerful and privileged role. You have highly sought after skills, skills that most people do not have the opportunity to be educated on. This is due to a variety of reasons, including teaching statistics and programming is hard, and we don't have enough teachers to do it. Getting exposed to and encouraged to pursue skills in data science is rare, and especially rare in certain groups like women or rural populations. A master's degree in data science is expensive and therefore cost prohibitive for many. And we do not have widespread statistical literacy to make the path to becoming a data scientist easier. Learning brand new things is tough. Power will be handed to you in possibly unexpected ways. Western society often values quantitative methods over observational reports, lived experience, or even rigorous qualitative analyses. This has some historical roots in misogyny and colonialism, where only a small proportion of people were seen as intelligent enough to pursue logical subjects like math and statistics. Of course, science is still crucial for society, and quantitative methods can tell us a lot, but they are overvalued even when plenty of statistical findings are outright false. Remember Boyd and Crawford's mythology of big data. So you may be handed respect, authority, and power simply for being the data science person. So here you are, a powerful resource and people looking to you to turn the numbers into insight. After acknowledging the privileges you came in with, you can also be proud of yourself for making it this far. You worked hard to learn your data science skills and you do have lots of different talents. From programming to visualizing to communicating, you are a very important part of solving the world's problems. So now let's talk about responsibility. When you think of data science, you might think about business models, such as those that optimize ad revenue. Even these seemingly trivial data science tasks come with a lot of responsibility, as a small mistake could propagate into a lot of money lost for your company. Data science is used in every field imaginable, from marketing to medicine, from transportation to waste management. And while a data scientist might feel a bit removed from the real-world implementations of their work, their models and analytics will eventually affect real lives. The decisions we make because it's convenient or tidy or because we aren't entirely sure what the model is doing, yes, that will happen to you, can end up with large-scale harms. Let's work through an example of a not-so-obvious mistake in an algorithm that snowballs into unjustly harming a lot of people risk assessment scores for whether or not someone is likely to commit a crime. This isn't science fiction, this is real life. Risk assessment scores are used in the criminal justice system today. Because people tend to see numbers and statistics as more objective, society has introduced predictive algorithms into our courtrooms and law enforcement agencies. It's not just one algorithm, it's many, ranging from predicting where a crime will occur or using someone's social media data to predict if they are likely to be more violent. And in this example, we will be looking at an algorithmic risk assessment of recidivism. Recidivism, the tendency of a convicted criminal to re-offend. Parole, or release from prison with some restrictions, can be granted to prisoners who are deemed fit to reintegrate into society. An individual may go up for parole where several factors will be examined by a judge, including their original crime, their behavior while serving in prison, their demographics, and other features. With an overworked system and the desire to reduce imprisonment numbers, it makes sense to want an automated system to help determine who should get parole. But hidden in this desire for efficiency is the perpetuation of racial bias biases that have a lot of historical inertia in these systems. It is well known that our prison system is particularly harsh on black and brown members of society. 
The school-to-prison pipeline describes the disproportionate tendency of minors and young adults from disadvantaged backgrounds to become incarcerated because of increasingly harsh school and municipal policies, as well as because of educational inequality in the United States, with Black students affected the most harshly. Black men are at the highest risk for police violence and overall receive longer prison sentences than white men arrested for the same crimes. These racial disparities are present in all historical crime data used to train algorithms. Maybe you're seeing the problem now. A good way to repeat biases of the past would be to use them to train an automated tool to determine the future. When training data contains racial bias, the model will learn that racial bias and replicate it. We are telling a model, this is who got parole in the past, please automatically sort people to fit what we have done before. But what we have done before is racist. What seems objective and flawless to a judge or jury, who are unlikely to know what went into the tool, is actually an opaque replicator of bias. It is our job as data scientists to both think critically about algorithmic design and to communicate how algorithms work to non-experts. When in doubt, ask the stakeholders of the models to weigh in. We call this situated data science, where the goal is not to design for, but to design with. Remember to stay kind, stay curious, and stay critical.